Hello everyone and welcome back here to Canning Farms and as you can see behind me here we have uh, the next batch of heifers have arrived for this year so um, 55 arrived last night um, so what we're going to do here now is we're just going to bring them in, weigh them, uh, see if there's any health issues written with them um, and then what we're going to do uh, check for warts, uh, mastitis, ringworm, body condition, pink eye, everything like that uh, note that's wrong or any of the body conditions and things like that and then what we have to do then is split them into a smaller group. So we're going to go no more than 35. And we're going to work around three groups of 35, I think. So uh, I have more, I think, to come in. But uh, the initial 55 arrived last night. So we just stuck them into this paddock here last night. Just all together for the minute. Just to let them fill their bellies and get a true weight on them. And what we do now is we'll run them in. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, out of girls, come on, come on girls, come on, come on, out of girls, come on, come on, come on girls, come on, out of girls, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So we're about halfway through here and um, so we're about halfway through here and what we're doing is we're just taking down their tag numbers, their condition, any warts, pink eye, uh, if there's any lameness or feet problems, cuts or abrasions, and then if there's anything else, so ringworm, one or two are flighty, things like that. So what we do is just write down their tag number, so that's 1943. Take a look at her condition, which is good. All these heifers, in fairness, would be good. Uh, then we take a look in between her legs then and in her belly to see if she has any warts or mastitis and make sure that she has four teeth as well. So she's clean so we write down no for this one. Pink eye. Uh, no. Uh, then we let her out then and look and see if she is lame. So what I do is just walk her, make sure she's not lame or anything. And then what else we're looking for is we're looking for any cuts or abrasions or any damage that's been done. So all's good there. So in both then categories, it's a no, and it's a no. And then finally, the last thing I do is is take out my phone and every animal is photographed and what I do then is just I edit the photo and I just write in their tag number is 1943 so that now we have a record of every animal that goes through the crush so next job so next job we're going to do is we're just going to give them some of these cosy or, or cosy cure uh, boluses. So, eh, just have the application going. This is the first time I've actually given boluses to cattle on the farm before. I've never given it before. But, eh, the cosy eye secure bolus. Eh, it's a blue bolus and it's like a soluble glass bolus. So you have to put it into your pocket, eh, let it warm up. Eh, they're going to take two of these. Um, each one of the heifers. These are the OG heifers, uh, so these are going to be getting uh, two boluses. Um, so as you can see, the bolus won't come out uh, out of the gun, whatever. So we have a heifer wave, and all we're going to do is just lock her up in the head gate. And what you want to do is just grab her mouth in the side, just pass it over the tongue. Let her kind of swallow it a bit. And then what you do then is just pull the trigger. That should be the two boluses in and out. Just make sure then that she doesn't cough them up and that she swallows them up and right. And yeah, that's it. So with these uh, co-secure boluses, you have to keep them in your pocket to warm up beforehand because like I said, they're soluble glass. 
uh, the outside can sometimes, if it's cold, when it goes into the animal, uh, it can sometimes crack. Um, these boluses do for copper, iodine, selenium, uh, and something else. Uh, So these uh, boluses do for cobalt, selenium, iodine, and copper. Um, so David's, uh, these are David's heifers. He uses these and he finds them very good. Um, so we're gonna try them out this year. So they come in a, in a, it's a terrible pack like this. So you just open up the foil and then they come in for bolt processes like that. Just take them out the pack. And then have, if you're doing multiple cattle, have four in one pocket and then when you empty one, throw them up into the next pocket so they'll be warmed up by the time you're ready to use them. Okay so next thing we're going to do is we're going to do them for IBR and Lepto so these are the second batch has arrived so I actually filmed the outro before these came so we're doing this now another day. So for the IBR it's a live vaccine so you have your liquid and you have like uh, it's like little pellets in here so you take some of your liquid, <coughs> take about five mil of it So basically it has to be activated. So what you do then is you inject it into your powder. Inject that in. Dissolve that. Now what you need to do is take this stuff and inject it back into the big bottle to activate it. It's important too that you keep your vaccines cold. So what we do here is we just have a nice pack there, a bag, and we put it in a cool bag and then that'll keep it cold while we're at the cattle. Any surplus then is in the fridge. So uh, this IBR vaccine here, this particular one is an intermuscular. So what you do is it's two mil per animal. So what I do is just give her a tap, put the needle in. Inject, and that's where it's done. So use separate needles for both. And then we're using the Bovillus uh, Lepto uh, vaccination as well. These have to be done for Lepto before they go. So what we do then is this is two mil, but this is under the skin. So this is subcutaneous. So it's two mil. Then we go to the front of the animal here. Tend to either, I like to inject them here behind the muscle, I feel like it's a bit better, easier to grab, but most people inject in the neck. So under the skin, give it a squeeze, give it a rub, and that's where it's done. So it's as easy, easy as that, or, well it was that time. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll just run through the rest of the cattle. Like I said, this is the second batch, so we're doing the same thing we've done earlier on in the video, going through them for any falls, any defects, taking photos of them and weighing them.
winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down So we split the heifers up into groups um, There's 30 here There's 25 down below um, We have another group of 60 coming in So we'll add to this group trying to hold groups around the 35 36 mark including the bull um, but they've got out for a few days now there's a bit of shine on them um, few with pink eye few with a little bit of warts and things like that but absolutely nothing major they're all in really good condition um, so hopefully now fingers crossed the grazing season goes well and uh, these do okay so um, I think these are going to be getting stock bulls rather than the eye which is good for me it cuts down the workload allows me to just uh, keep track of the grass and things like that uh, the other eight there that we were given the co-secure to they will be getting AI'd and um, they're going on a program uh, they'll be getting sex semen um, and uh, these are just getting uh, Frisian bulls so we'll just keep an eye out for that and um, the few that have pink eye and things like that we'll uh, treat them now over the next few days and uh, yeah so that's it um, so hopefully you enjoy today and uh, hopefully these girls enjoy their stay here and uh, do well. So thanks very much and uh, we'll see you in the next one.